So in the last episode, we built this clean collection system here. We have the business summary, we have the average orders by customer, some extra functions we have for our order collections. But we're still missing query filtering. I'm Harris from Laravel News, and today we're adding query scopes to make our queries readable. Our order collection is working great so far, but look what happens across our app. For example, if we don't really want the order at all in this case, but we have something like this, so we would like to have the orders that are marked as completed and the created ad is greater or equals to the start of the month. What if we have this in different places as well? So let's say we have a report controller where we also have the exact same scope, exact same query in this case. And let's say that we start you know, needing the completed status and we'd like to change this to pending. We have to go to each place in our application and change that. And some place, this can be very cumbersome. We solved the analysis problem with our order collection before, but we're still repeating the same query filters everywhere. Every time we want to complete orders for this month, we are writing the same word clauses. Query scopes are going to solve this beautifully for us. Let's dive right in. So what do we have in this case? Let's try to enhance the order model that we had from the last episode and add the Laravel 12 new query scope syntax. So let's go to our order model here. And what would like to have? As you can see, we would like to have all the orders that are marked, the status is marked as completed. Let's create a protected function. So protected function, we're gonna call this completed. And what we'll pass here is the eloquent builder. So builder, import the eloquent, the eloquent builder at the top, then add query. We're gonna return void because we don't really want to return anything in this case. We'll see why. We're going to use the query and then just like that, we're going to use where status is completed. And the basic thing we'd like to add here is we would like to mark this as scope. Now we'll have a local scope, a local query scope that we can use. Let's go ahead and add the second functionality we'd like to have. And we're going to name this this month because we would like to have the created ad based on the start of the month. So again, protected function this month same thing we're going to have the builder we're going to name this query and now we're going to have created add greater or equals to now start of the month last but not least we're going to also mark this as query scope perfect so laravel 12 introduces this scope attribute any method you know marked with this attribute becomes queryable when we call it we drop the attribute and use the method name directly and let's try to test it out. So now our queries become super more expressive. Let's go back to our dashboard controller. And instead of the workloads here, we're gonna use completed. And what was the name again? This month, this month, perfect. Let's dined up these two. Let's go to our browser, refresh. And you see now that we have the exact same results like before. We have six orders. And if we go deeper, you're gonna see that these are marked as completed. And the created ad is for this month, which is what we really wanted. Now let's say that we would like to have some queries that are more popular. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna go ahead in our orders, the order model, we're gonna create a new protected function. We're gonna call this popular. And again, we have the builder query. And now we're gonna also have a mean number, a minimum number that we're gonna mark those as popular. Let's have a default set to 100 in this case. So if those orders have more than 100 total orders, well, they're gonna be marked as popular. So let's do that. We're gonna do this as greater or equals of the minimum total. And we're gonna also be able to pass a parameter in this case. We're gonna be able to define what's the minimum number that those orders can be marked as popular. So we shouldn't forget to mark this as scope. Let's go back to our dashboard controller and instead of getting all the orders for this month, the complete orders, we're going to do popular ones. Let's go back, refresh. And you see now that we have 18 because those 18 orders have more than 100 orders, you know, in total. So they are the popular ones. We can also mix and match those as well. So we have the completed ones and then we would like to have them for this month, but the popular ones are not based on default. We're going to add 200 in this case, which means that the orders that are marked as popular are only the ones with more than 200 in total. 
go back, refresh, and you see now that we have six orders that abides to this query scope. Let's go to one of them. We'll see that we have the completed ones, more than 200, and based on this month. Pretty cool. And remember that these all return you know, our order collection automatically. So we get our custom methods too. And we can combine those to see what this means. So here is where it gets very powerful. Our scopes work perfectly with our order collection method. So now that we can also do is we can go into the orders and get the business summary out of all these. These are chain now. So we have total orders is six like we had before. But now we have the summary we'd like to have as well. So the total revenue and the average order value based on the previous lesson we had. So each piece enhances the other. That's the idea behind this whole thing. So scopes helps us filter the data elegantly and our collection methods help us analyze it. Let's go ahead and add some more powerful scopes, shall we? So what we can go ahead and do is go into our order model again, add a new protected function. And what we're going to do in this case, we're going to have one of them called with user. Let's pass the builder again, can name this query. I'm going to have the void, but in this case, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to use the with method and we're going to add user here. So whenever we use the with user, we're going to attach the user relationship in the results. Again, this is scope. And last but not least, let's add one more very cool method. Let's, for example, say that we'd like to have, you know, the results based on a specific period. So I'm going to copy this from here so we don't have to write this whole thing again. And I'm going to paste here. We're going to add this function called for period, and we can pass a period as a string. So if the period is today, then we get the orders based on today. We have the same for the week, same for the month. And if we have no, not, nothing passed as the period, then we just return back the query as is. And this is based on the match query in this case. So the, the for period scope in this case uses this match expression which is particularly powerful because one scope handles multiple time periods. So let's go ahead and use that. Go back to our controller and you can see now that the results we have, let's go back and remove the business summary. We want the orders. You'll see that if I go to the first order, there is nothing in the relations, right? Go search for relations. You'll see that our relations are empty in this case. Let's go now and add and say that we would like to have the user as well. So with user in this case. Go back and refresh, open up the exact same order, and you'll see now we do have the relation as part of the result. So the user relation is here, and we can use it as we see fit. Let's now remove that and use the other method we have, for period. So for period, let's say that we would like to have, let's remove this as to make sure. So we would like to have the completed orders that are popular with more than 200 total orders for period of a month. Let's go back and refresh. We have the exact same six orders. Let's say that we, have, we would like to do that for weekly, right? That's week, not weekly. So week, let's refresh. We have none for this week, which makes sense. Let's go to our database now, to our orders, and say the created ad for one of these to be for this week. So do this for August 29. Let's save that. Let's go back, refresh the web page, and you can see that we have one order indeed, which is in, based on this exact week. I'm going to go back and revert the change. We don't have to see that. And let's continue now. So look at how clean all this has become so far. Each controller tells us a clear story about what it's trying to accomplish. The queries read like business requirements. It's plain, it's, it's so cool. So this can become very, very powerful. It can become a real reporting query. So. Let's say that we would like to have the orders, the completed orders, you know, that are pop out for this month. Let's do that. This month with more than 300 totals and with the user, we get that. And last but not least, we can do business summary. Go back, refresh, and we do have our business summary, just as expected. That single chain filters to completed orders, you know, from this month above 300, as we saw here. With the users, you know, it loads the user relationship and generates a complete business summary, all plain English. And keep in mind that the scopes work in relationships too. We have transformed repetitive query filters into expressive, reusable scopes that work perfectly with our custom collections. 
So no more repeated work clauses and no more unclear intentions. In the next episode, we're putting this all together to build a flexible reporting system using both scopes and collections. So if this helps you clean up your query chaos, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more. See you in the next one.